No conditions. Now, conditions are things that we um, self-impose we un- upon our own desires. And that's why we struggle to fulfill them, because we think that we, we put conditions of time and space, our body, our present limitations, and we condition our desires that way. We say, well, I can't have this until that, or because uh, until my life's like this, then I can imagine that, or... Um, I'm not where I physically want to be, so I can't um, imagine what I want to imagine. I can't accept it. A um, perfect example of this conditioning was when uh, Neville was asked the question, suppose I want to have a house, but the house takes six months to build. What should I do? Um, Neville says, imagine that you're sleeping in the house tonight. Don't wait. Remember, hope deferred makes the heart sick, so don't wait. Don't add the time, the condition of time upon it, and don't add the con- the condition of the or the past. Maybe your past mistakes. Don't. I'm gonna speak about why that's important to let go of as well when you imagine. Why past mistakes and fears of the future need to be gone while you imagine. These are conditions. They don't allow you to experience fulfillment. They re- they restrict you from experiencing it in imagination. And um, the body as well as a condition, thinking that, well, well by, by the body, I mean like your present limitations where you're at physically also is a limitation, thinking, well, I can't, I can't be where I want to be because where I'm at physically. Um, but also Neville gave the example of somebody who was thrown in jail and they wanted to be free. They, they could imagine themselves free. They don't have to live behind the bars. And, um, and this is not a, you know, we're not... Um, when I say let go of conditions, these aren't you know I'm not you know you don't have to force yourself to let go of them. There are things you get to let go of while you imagine they are free. Remember, conditions are restrictions. So the more and more free you feel, the less uh, conditions you're actually imposing upon yourself. And um, conditions of time and space seem to be very difficult to let go of because that's basically the when and the how. And it's really not up to us to condition it's up to us to accept desires that's what we're called to do when it comes to operating the law when you're conditioned you're not operating the law successfully because you're not being successful in imagination success and failure lie in imagination the moment you are successful is when you successfully for example that guy who wants to be in that home but it's going to take six months he's successful the moment he feels that he's sleeping in that home that night if he actually feels like he's there he's successful in imagination but if he starts conditioning it He's never going to feel that he actually accepted the desire. He's never going to feel fulfilled. And um, when it comes to our past mistakes, and I think this is where the concept of forgiveness becomes so important, is that you know the you know the Bible tells you basically that if you are um, if God has forgiven you, then everybody else must forgive you because who can go against God? And the way I describe forgiveness is actually being the person you want to be in imagination. It doesn't really matter what you've thought of in your past or what you've done. Because if you can imagine yourself, for example, let's take the case of the guy who's in jail. If he wants to imagine himself free, and the imagination, the only creative power, allows him to do that, then the imagination has forgiven him. And if the imagination has forgiven him, then who's to say he's not forgiven? We all must say he's free now because he assumed assumed his freedom. He appropriated his own freedom from imagination and who can go against the imagination the imagination knows every thought you've ever had it knows every (laughs) and i'm telling you i i have had many many bad thoughts in my life many unlovely things i've thought of others yet it still allows me no matter what to assume and appropriate what i want within it it forgives me it tells me that it's okay you can accept something new now you don't have to live in this muck and mire inside your mind You're forgiven entirely. So you don't have to let the past mistakes be conditions you place upon accepting your desires. And um, I think the past is really what paralyzes us from accepting desires. But once we see that if the imagination has forgiven me, that's all that's needed. That's That's all that's expressing here. And that should be extremely relieving to those who have had um, pasts they're not proud of. 
you know, it's okay because you are still allowed. You're still qualified to imagine what you want. You're still qualified to be what you want. The question is, are you going to accept that? Now, I'm not telling you to accept things from some God in the sky or some, you know, I don't believe in, um, personally, I don't believe in like subconscious impressing and I don't believe in, um, like I don't believe in doing that as a work to try to get what you want. I think those are conditions. Um, I think it's already done in imagination and what we must do is accept it. I don't think there's anything, there's really no external God you must go to. There's no universe you must go to. It's all done within you. Because it's as within, so without. So if I want to be something in my world, then I must be it within me. If I want to express a certain attitude in my outer life, let me express it within myself. Let me forgive myself by expressing it. Let me not hold myself back with conditions and restrictions. Let me not hold myself back with time and space and say, well, I, I don't know how, so I can't accept it. Or I don't know when, so I can't accept it. Don't let, us, don't, don't let me do that. Don't, that. That's leaving me in the dust. I don't want to be left in the dust. I want to be forgiven. I want to be transformed and changed. And the imagination allows me to do that. Um, so I'm not asking you to believe in anything outside of you. Because these gods that people worship in this world don't do anything. They're, they're made with wooden, uh, they're made out of wood by human hands. Those gods can't show you, they can't show you you expressing what you want to express. They can't say yes to you. They don't even have, you know, they don't have divine eyes and divine ears that can hear and see what it desires. Why believe in those gods? Why believe in a universe that you don't even know if it heard you or not? You know, that's why I love the Bible because it tells us in the book of John that if we believe he, meaning the imagination, hears us, then we can be confident that our request has already been made of him. So if I just believe my imagination heard me, it's done. That's how, that's how confident that author was in his own imagination. He saw God from within. He said, if God heard me, then it's done. That's how much of a, that's how forgiving and that's how forgiving God is. And I mean, I know you might not like the word God, but for me personally, that just, I just been used to it. But you can say um, anything really source or the one within that, or the wise one within, whatever you want to call it, um, that has already forgiven you. And it proves it's forgiven you by letting you imagine what you want. If you, were, if you couldn't imagine it, then you're not forgiven. But you can imagine all things, no matter what, no matter if you're behind bars, no matter what of your past, you're still allowed, you're still qualified to imagine what you want. Regardless of the self-concept you've held of yourself, Maybe you're someone like me who's, who's been used to self-sabotage growing up. You're still forgiven. It doesn't matter. And if God has forgiven you, or the imagination has forgiven you, then who can stop the imagination? Who can say no to it? If it says, yes, you're forgiven, you can imagine what you want, you can be what you want, then everyone must conform. That's all that is expressing here. And, and I don't want you to feel like you need to force these conditions off of you. You get to let go of them. You get to actually let them fall down. You don't have to. You can almost say, it's not my business to know how. And you truly feel that. It's not my business to know when. All my business is, is to, as the Bible says, is to do my Father's will. And my Father's will is to imagine myself being what I want to be. So, that's all I'm concerned. All I'm concerned is being who I want to be in my mind. It's not. I'm not told to be afraid. I'm not told to be afraid of my future or let my past ruin it. I'm not told to do that. I'm just told to imagine just as though I am, and to accept that. That's all I'm called to do. So I think forgiveness is such an important message because um, to feel forgiven of everything um, truly can cause a freedom within you that like you're, you're not doing anything wrong. And even if you've done something wrong, you can always correct it. You don't have to live there. And I... Um, I want us to reach a state of mind that allows that. Don't be in a state of mind that is wondering if you are forgiven or if you are allowed to imagine this or that or worried about the how. I want us to be in a state of mind where we know we're forgiven, where we're, we know we can imagine what we want, that what I assume becomes, that's the state of mind we must be in. And uh, I want to end this with a, um, a quote from Neville that... Um, I found very powerful. And he says, Now you may think 
This horrible thing, I, in my ignorance, imagined so many unlovely things. Must I live with it? I planted it. If this is a law, and it endures forever, I can't deny, if this is God's law, that whatever is taking place now in my world, I brought it into being because I imagined it at some moment in time. A moment, if is unpleasant, when I was ignorant of God's law. Nevertheless, he is no respecter of persons, and here I am living with horrible fruit, where I in my ignorance planted it. But we need not despair. There is still a greater law than that which than that, a much greater law. And that law, as we are told, he quotes, With the pure thou showest thyself pure. With the crooked thou showest thyself perverse. That confirms that law, that the universe is only an infinite response. So, I think him to be what he will be to me. But in the 130th Psalm, you will find something far more profound than this. Here the psalmist makes the statement that if you would mark the iniquities, who can stand? And he quotes, If thou, O Lord, mark the iniquities, who can stand? But there is forgiveness with thee. So you need not ask anyone in this world why he did or what he did to bring about the conditions he is now in. Don't analyze them. Don't dig as to why he did it. He could have done it deliberately. He could have done it in ignorance. But here's a law that transcends this law of planting and reaping. It is the law of forgiveness. Forgiveness is simply revision, or you may call, call it repentance. But the Bible speaks of it as repentance and speaks of it as forgiveness. You come upon a scene, all right? You don't like the scene, and it's factual, no question about it, and you know that some someone somewhere brought it into being by first imagining a scene of that nature because it couldn't have come into being unassisted by an imaginal act. So it is brought into being by an imaginal act. Well, forget it. Don't condemn her. Don't condemn him. Just now do something about it. And do it now. And that applies to ourselves as well. I'm done quoting Neville. I'm talking now. Is that regardless of what you did, forget it. Do something about it. Don't worry, you know, worrying and about your present limitations or letting your past paralyze you, or letting the, the uncertainty of the future terrify you and petrify you and stagnate you. These things, you're not doing anything. You're not moving. We have to move and act, and we can move and act in imagination by becoming what we want to be through the law of forgiveness. It's forgiveness that allows us to truly experience a freedom within ourselves that we might not have thought possible before. But seeing that if I can imagine what I want, regardless of what I've done, then God's forgiven me. And if God has forgiven me, all must forgive me. Because that's, there's only here, the only one here is God. So practice this law of forgiveness by not allowing yourself to restrict yourself and condition yourself in any way. Don't let time, space, the when, the how, um, people, the thoughts of others. None of these things have to be restrictions. As soon as you assume it in the imagination, you become it in imagination. Now trust in your imagination. And don't trust any outside God. You know, God is not on the outside. The creator is not found in in a building that doesn't pay taxes. <laughs> he's not found in some... Um, he's found within you. He dwells within us. Every single one of us, he dwells within. His name is I Am. So shape and mold I Am to how you want it to be. And allow yourself to be forgiven by accepting the I Am's you would love to be.